Enter the Chengdu J-20, nicknamed the Mighty Dragon, China's bold counter to America's air dominance. But is this fifth-generation stealth fighter truly a formidable challenger or just an elaborate facade symbolizing China's struggle to match US prowess in the skies? Join us as we delve deep into the J-20's capabilities and limitations, unraveling the mystery. Is it a genuine contender in the world of aerial warfare or a mere imitation, falling short of its lofty aspirations? Let's unravel the secrets of the mighty dragon and discover what truly lies beneath its stealthy exterior. The genesis of the J-20 can be traced back to the late 20th century, when Chinese military officials first announced their ambition to develop a fifth-generation stealth aircraft. Was this announcement a strategic bluff or an admission of their technological shortcomings? The answer remained shrouded in secrecy. The emergence of the JXX program in the early 2000s, believed to be the precursor to the J-20, added fuel to the fire of speculation. Prior to this, China's aerial might was represented by the J-10s, third-generation fighters that entered service in the late 90s. As the story of the J-20 unfolded, the project was tightly veiled in secrecy, sparking endless conjectures and theories. It wasn't until 2010 that the J-20 first flexed its muscles on the ground, followed by its inaugural flight test in 2011. When the J-20 began its journey, its early tests started to peel back the layers of mystery surrounding its capabilities. The aircraft wasn't just another addition to the skies, it was a statement by China, a signal of its intent to redefine air power, particularly in strategically crucial regions. But how did the J-20's design and features align with this ambitious goal? Crafted as a twin-jet engine stealth fighter, the J-20 was tailored for dominating the skies above the contentious territories of the South China Sea and the East China Sea. It adopted a canard configuration, reminiscent of its predecessor, the J-10, yet diverging from the designs of America's modern F-22 and F-35. In terms of size, the J-20 stands out as one of the largest stealth aircraft ever built, slightly longer than its counterparts but with a somewhat smaller wingspan. The story of the J-20 didn't stop after its initial flights in 2011 and 12. In pursuit of technological parity with advanced Russian and American designs, the aircraft underwent a series of upgrades. But what specific enhancements were made, and how did these changes position the J-20 in the global arena of stealth fighters? The journey of the J-20, it seemed, was as much about evolution and adaptation as it was about innovation and ambition. The first among them was an upgrade to its engine. According to the initial reports, China didn't have the technology and expertise to create a fifth-generation-worthy jet engine. Chengdu, the company that designs and builds the J-20s, managed to acquire an improved version of the Russian Saturn AL-31 engine, AL-31FM2. However, the engines were sealed to prevent tampering and reverse engineering. The initial engine choice had several drawbacks. First, it was too large, too loud, and too emission-heavy to be not tracked by enemy radar or positioning technology. As such, the plane's stealth technology and design were largely negated by the presence of a bulky engine that created a large flare behind it. Second, the engine couldn't vector its thrust. Thrust vectoring is vital engine technology that allows the jet to change its angular velocity without rotating the plane itself. This means the plane wasn't as maneuverable as those with thrust vectoring, such as the F-22, which is widely considered to be the plane the Chinese were aiming to beat. Third, the engine failed to incorporate supercruise, meaning it couldn't fly at max speeds without repowering its afterburners. As a result, the plane could be tracked via heat sensors while in high-speed flight, a fact that would be crucial if it were in any real combat scenario. Supercruising is yet another feature present in the F-22, making the J-20, a plane designed over 15 years later, technologically lag behind the last-generation model of the US. Finally, the engine's power, which directly influences the plane's maximum speed and payload capacity, was too low. According to the technical specs, the AL-31 can only output 145 kN, 4.5 tons of thrust, far behind the maximum power of contemporary American models. This meant that the J-20 would be far too slow in its initial iteration to ever get in effective weapon range, even if it was equipped with some of the most powerful air-to-air -air missiles. By the way, Chinese missiles are considered actually superior to the most commonly used American alternatives but still don't make up for the technological gap in supporting equipment and weaponry. 
This led to multiple iterations of engine upgrades to slowly add on the capabilities that the F-22 and F-35 aircraft already had a decade before. First, the engine was upgraded with a domestic WS-10, with three different models, and finally the current WS-15. Each step forward in the J-20's development not only ramped up its engine power, but also filled in some crucial gaps in the stealth technology arena. Despite these strides, it appears that the J-20 still doesn't quite stack up to the F-119 engines, the powerhouse behind America's stealth fighters. So this raises a compelling puzzle. How exactly does the J-20 fall short, and in what specific aspects is it trailing behind the advanced F-119s? Let's get into it. For example, the WS-15 doesn't have recessed nozzles, so the engine still has issues with thermal management and will likely stand out like a Christmas tree for any infrared-seeking systems. This can nullify any and all attempts to over-engineer the plane to contain current generation stealth technology in other areas. Additionally, there have been conflicting reports of the engine's power. According to the specifications reported by the Chinese media and military, the newest iteration of the WS-15 achieved a thrust of 18 tons, outpacing the F-119's 15.6 tons. However, this may have been a way for China to appear technologically superior. Many aviation bloggers believe that the US and China are using different tests to report the engine's maximum power. According to some, the WS-15 specs are based on high-altitude flight testing, it's part of the three main testing sequences, along with ground stand testing and ground mounted testing. The nominal thrust recorded during high altitude testing is the highest among the three. The report from the Chinese military would align with previous practices of announcing the best number to boost numbers and showcase prominence or stir up controversy. On the other hand, the US companies report the lowest recorded number of the three available tests, usually one of the ground tests. Therefore, the figure for the F-119s is likely from one of those two. In some simulations, it's speculated that the nominal thrust of an engine can rise more than 20% when switching from ground to high-altitude flight tests. This means that the F-119s with an estimated high-altitude thrust of between 35,000 and 39,000 pounds of force most likely have comparable, if not higher, power to the WS-15 engines if the tests were equal. Keep in mind that Chinese engines were also developed decades after F-22s became locked in their current configurations, so they are far behind the curve of modern engine design. Additionally, American F-35s use an upgraded version of the F-119 engine, the F-135, that maximizes thrust in exchange for removing supercruise capacity. Apart from sheer power, it seems that the Chinese engines have a much lower lifetime expectancy than American models. In some reports, the WS-10 could withstand 1,500 hours of use, while the WS-15 upgraded that to 4,000 hours. However, both figures pale in comparison to the F-119 and F-135s, which were rated for 12,000 hours. The stark difference in the expected lifespan means that Chinese engines are likely subject to much higher rates of wear and part malfunction. In the event of hostile actions between Chinese and American air forces, the J-20s would likely need to be recalled more often for repairs, and many airplanes could become grounded over time simply because their engines gave out. On the plus side for China, it's ordered many more J-20s than the US currently has in its command. According to reports from 2022, China fielded more than 200 of these aircraft, compared to the US, which only has 187 available and no plan for future production. By contrast, China is still producing more planes, with some estimates suggesting that it broke the 250 aircraft mark in 2023 and aims to field more than 1,000 J-20s by 2030. This leads to the fact that China is actively ordering and producing more engines for its aircraft, while the US would be forced to renegotiate and re-engage its existing contracts to repair supplies. However, China's production model is trying to emphasize quantity, with planes built similarly to a conveyor belt. This means that a sudden supply chain issue, something that has globally happened to multiple resources or tech pieces, could invariably have a domino effect and slow down new production pieces to a trickle. The supply chain issue could also be exacerbated by the fact that China has to import a lot of minerals and other materials to meet its industrial demand. In the event of mass armed conflict, it's not out of the realm of possibility that China could lose some of its trading partners. There's no telling how that would affect China's mass production capabilities for engines and other aircraft parts. Even more critically, it appears that China depends on the US itself to deliver the materials and parts necessary to build the plane's tail section. Since the tail needs to endure significant heat, 
up to 3000 Celsius with afterburners, and pressures up to 10 times atmospheric, these parts are vital in ensuring the planes can maintain flight. A conflict between the two nations would directly inhibit China's capacity to produce more airworthy planes. China likely needs at least several more years to reach the technological and industrial capacity and levels capable of domestically producing all the necessary pieces to create a J-20 from scratch. As such, it's impossible to predict whether China will have enough engines and spare parts to field an adequate fleet of J-20s while also sufficiently servicing them in a drawn-out war for air superiority. Apart from the engine, the rest of the airplane doesn't seem to have undergone significant technological advancements compared to the contemporary F-22s and F-35s. For example, the stealth technology of the J-20s has been repeatedly called into question by multiple sources, not least of which is the US Air Force. In one report by the Indian military, their radar was able to accurately detect and track J-20s while they were flying close to the border. This was during the most recent border disputes between India and China. These are recurring incidents between the countries and are likely responsible for India solidifying its ties to the US and the rest of the West. However, we must keep in mind that the show of force could also be another of China's ploys to misdirect the public before any actual conflict takes place. In many cases, military aircraft are fitted with detachable add-ons called Lunenburg lenses. These spherical metallic pieces actively reflect radio signals to the receiver, making the aircraft visible during training operations. This masks the actual radar signature of the plane when the lenses are removed, such as in conflict scenarios. The wide availability of lenses means that the J-20s might have sufficient stealth technology beyond the report suggested by the Indian military. However, according to claims from the former US Air Force Chief of Staff Michael Ryan, the design of the J-20s looks remarkably similar to that of the F-117. This is a first-generation stealth airplane with technology dating back from the 70s and 80s. If this were true, then China's ultimate aircraft would be far behind the curve. In simulations based on the approximate specifications revealed by Chinese media and inferred capabilities, the J-20s could be locked onto by a ground-based Type 99 anti-aircraft gun. This means that the US could potentially deploy these guns in islands around the East China Sea and effectively cut off J-20s from much of their proposed effective range. Where the Mighty Dragon supposedly shines is in its effective engagement range. According to claims made by the Chinese military, the J-20 has an effective range of roughly 1,200 miles. Compare this to its modern counterparts, with F-22s having a range of 530 miles, F-35Bs 581 miles, and Shukhoi Su-57's range of 930 miles. This would mean that the Chinese Air Force could fly its planes from the Chinese coast and well into the South or East China Sea to attack US bases scattered throughout the islands in the Indo-Pacific. Furthermore, this would mean that military bases and hangars housing the planes could be protected by robust anti-air weaponry to dissuade counterattacks. Furthermore, China has a small edge in air-to-air -air missiles. The J-20 can carry four PL-15 long-range air-to-air missiles with an operational range of between 120 and 190 miles. By comparison, the US Air Force currently uses AIM-120 AMRAAM missiles with an effective range of only 100 miles. The US is aiming to replace its supply with advanced AIM-260 JATAM missiles with an effective range of at least 120 miles to counter Chinese missile supremacy. However, Lockheed Martin is still currently refining the design of the missiles, with production expected to start later in 2024. Even then, the US likely won't get a significant supply of these missiles by 2026. Additionally, the J-20 holds another two PL-10 short-to-mid-range air-to-air missiles in its side hangars. These side missile bays also represent one of the first notable improvements in the J-20 over the F-22s. Namely, the side bays use rotating rail carriers that allow the missiles to remain connected to the plane while being fed targeting information. At the same time, the side bay doors can close with the missile primed for firing, reducing the loss of aerodynamics. One area in which the Chinese seem to be underdeveloped in the J-20 is the autocannon. Specifically, the airplane has no autocannon options at all, leaving it pretty much defenseless in an actual dogfighting scenario. Reports and speculations from aviation experts suggest that this was a concerted effort to maximize the plane's long-range capabilities. As such, the Chinese military apparently believes that dogfighting as a practice is likely to be completely abandoned in modern air-to-air -air warfare. 
Due to the aircraft's long-range effectiveness, it will likely excel at picking off distant ground targets or be focused on taking down enemy aircraft beyond their effective radar range due to superior missiles. However, even if this becomes the norm, some dogfighting between planes is likely to happen on a smaller scale, which can put J-20s in significant danger. To accentuate its shift to long-range operations, Chengdu has also developed a two-seater version of the J-20, dubbed J-20S. This model allows the second plane operator to coordinate communications between multiple aircraft, or even share its status and targeting information with naval and ground forces. It could also reduce the chance of human error due to information overload, with sensors outputting more and more relevant flight and combat data to the pilot. Additionally, the second operator could likely more actively interact with drones and AI-operated vehicles, especially considering recent reports that China is making strides in AI for combat training and active use. However, what the J-20 seems to lack compared to the US stealth aircraft models is the capacity to be refueled mid-flight. This might not be as much of a disadvantage if China were to fight a war close to its borders, and all speculations suggest that this may be the case, but it clearly showcases that the Chinese military technology is still behind in a few critical areas that the US military has solved years before to achieve its current air superiority. In the end, the ability for F-22s and F-35s to fly longer might mean that they will get an edge over J-20s in some scenarios. This directly clashes with the J-20's intended use as a long-range cruising aircraft that deploys missiles against targets. Furthermore, in some reports, it's been suggested that the radar and stealth capabilities of the J-20 are below those of the Su-57s, which are already lagging behind F-22s. This means that an approaching F-22 could feasibly get within a range where American current missiles would be more than effective at taking down a J-20 before the US airplane itself even gets noticed. The flaws in Chinese radar technology, or rather the US's unparalleled stealth advances, could invalidate all efforts by the Chinese military to gain a foothold of air superiority in its own country. It should also be mentioned that China has been repeatedly called out for mimicking or even flat-out stealing foreign technology before, and similar patterns have arisen with the J-20. For example, much of its external appearance resembles the scrapped MiG-1.44 design made by the Soviet Union in the 1990s. The MiG showcased the aerodynamic potential of close canard design, which has been transferred over to the J-series of Chinese planes nearly identically. As such, it's fair to say that China has somehow acquired or reverse-engineered the technology and specifications involved in the MiG-1.44 project. Some aviation experts conclude that the canard design of the J-20 is an evolution of the existing J-9, which was contemporary to or even preceded the MiG-1.44. They also suggested that the limitations imposed by the requirements of stealth fighters leave little room for the variety in shaping modern aircraft. Additionally, many consider the current specs of the J-20 to be based on significant data leaks of F-35 specifications, as well as clandestine efforts of Chinese cyber military forces to hack into US military bases. A report from 2014 suggested that a Chinese citizen, Su Bin, was arrested in Canada and accused of hacking into the systems of Lockheed Martin and Boeing, two of the major producers of parts for F-22s and F-35s. China also received a significant boon in Kosovo in 1999, where a F-117 Nighthawk was shot down in combat. China could ferry the wreckage from Kosovo thanks to its ties to Russia and Serbia, and Kosovo was a province of Serbia at the time, which could have feasibly allowed it to reverse-engineer much of its capabilities. Still, remember that the F-117 is a far older design than the F-22, which also makes this consistent with earlier reports from the US Air Force that stealth technologies of the J-20 and F-117 were similar. With China's previous examples of technological adaptation, it's clear that the J-20 can be considered an effort to bring the country's air force in line with the Western world. However, the current efforts have been undermined by the country's inability to properly implement or strategize on its technological integrations. This can be seen in the fighter jet's final design. Although initially touted as an all-purpose airplane, the J-20 has sacrificed nearly all short-range combat and dogfighting capacity to maintain long-range communications and weaponry. However, the weapons payload of the J-20, limited to only six missiles, is lacking when compared to the eight missile capacity of the F-22. As a result, the plane loses out in both long- and close-range combat against enemy aircraft, making its bombing capability and effective targeting range its main upsides. 
Finally, China's stealth technology is likely woefully behind the curve. Suppose China did indeed copy its stealth program from the felled F-117s and leaked F-35 data. In that case, the US will also have all the information it needs to effectively counteract the methods used by the J-20 if it doesn't significantly deviate from the original designs. There are two key areas where the J-20 can outcompete modern US fighter jets – maximum altitude and sheer numbers. According to specs released by the Chinese media, the J-20 can fly at altitudes of up to 66,000 feet, which is 8,000 feet higher than the F-22. This means that a fleet of J-20s could dodge F-22s by flying over them and reaching the more vulnerable ground bases in the Indo-Pacific. Keep in mind that these missions would require the planes to be fitted with air-to-ground ordnance, making them even less effective in aerial combat. The other advantage of the Chinese fleet of planes is its expected size. While the US currently maintains clear air supremacy due to technological advantages, the US Army fields less than 200 F-22s and around 350 F-35s. Additionally, F-22s are no longer being produced, and Lockheed Martin is slowly producing an order of 2,000 aircraft made by the various branches of the US Army. By contrast, estimates suggest that China has already produced 250 J-20s and is planning to field around 1,000 by 2030. However, depending on which contractor can produce airplanes faster, the US Air Force may have fewer latest-generation aircraft in its fleet at a certain point. This can be offset by the US actively trying to develop new airplanes to counteract the rising China threat and maintain its grip on the sky. In fact, the prototype of a sixth-generation fighter was previewed in 2020. However, the US Army has refused to provide more information on the aircraft, including which manufacturer will be primarily responsible for developing and producing them. The US Air Force is pursuing improvements over the current F-22 model via the Next Generation Air Dominance NGAD, program which started in 2014. Its two most probable producers are Boeing and Lockheed Martin after Northrop Grumman dropped out of the bidding phase in 2023. The US Navy had announced the FAXX program way back in 2012. Its current goal seems to be replacing the older FA-18 class of fighter aircraft and either complementing or phasing out F-35s from widespread use across the US fleets. Both of these programs are expected to start producing sixth-generation aircraft around 2030. These developments coincide with the US Marine Corps Force Design 2030 plan to restructure the Marines into a more self-sufficient task force that can hold and defend vital bases on islands in the South and East China Seas. The Force Design 2030 should improve the Marines' resilience to air-to-ground attacks and make them into a multidisciplinary force that can coordinate with the Air Force's efforts. These advancements are likely to considerably undermine China's air authority in the area and maintain the American stranglehold on air superiority. As such, it's pretty clear that the J-20 has arrived a few years too late to the global scene. Even with the most recent additions of the WS-15 engines, the planes are simply too technologically behind the contemporary Western models. In the era where fifth-generation fighter jets are likely going to be phased out, planes that only supposedly can match their aerial competitiveness, with no actual backing, are unlikely to stick for long. If China's rate of development doesn't change in the rest of the 2020s and the US successfully manages to keep its program secret, then the status quo should remain as is. It looks like the mighty dragon might not be so mighty after all. But what do you think? Can China mount a successful offensive using its fleet of J-20s before the US develops next-generation jets? Is China overblowing its fighter jet capabilities? Let us know in the comments section below. Now go and check out why the Type 99 Chinese tank sucks, or click this other video instead.